yesterday uh, we played uh, here on the news one clip of literally thousands from Iraq and Libya of a Libyan child, looks about three years old, with their entire lower mandible blown away and their tongue hanging out, screaming in pain and horror and confusion uh, from CERT, the uh, hometown of Gaddafi, that was leveled. And it's confirmed the al-Qaeda rebels that NATO and the West put in power through our peace president, uh, Obama, went in and systematically basically killed almost everybody, including those that have been trying to broker a peace deal. We've also talked to Wayne Madsen and other sources that have confirmed that Gaddafi left in broad daylight, love him or hate him, he left in broad daylight with a white flag of truce. He believed Hillary was, uh, was there to meet him and he was gonna turn himself in. But they know that dead men tell no tales. And my issue here is that you have 40 to 50,000 dead, that's what even mainstream media is saying, it's probably a lot more, on the Gaddafi side, mostly men, women, and children, mostly non-combatants, innocent civilians, and I've seen comments in the media about parking lot, kill everybody, kill them all, kill, kill, kill. And this is just such an incredible dehumanization of who we are. And it shows such ignorance. You know, in the last seven years, Gaddafi gave up his WMDs, came into the West, invested large amounts of the country's money with the West, and believed he was engaged in detente or peacemaking. And it's just incredible treachery from the white flag seven years ago to the white flag when he was killed a few weeks ago. And just ignorant people who don't hold passports, who haven't been around the world, who don't study geopolitical systems, to just say, they're brown, they're in Africa, kill them. After all, Al-Qaeda hit us on 9-11. But then Al-Qaeda is the very group that was brought in to start the overthrow of Gaddafi. And we're told this war was launched. Well, it was a kinetic non-military action that would last days, not weeks, Obama said. This war was launched to stop a humanitarian disaster, but it's created one, and the country is wrecked from end to end, and now the globalists will come in, take over the infrastructure, put the people in debt. It was Gaddafi that found out they were adding cancer viruses and HIV to flu shots and other vaccines. That came out years ago. It was Gaddafi that was building up Africa he was an eccentric, weird dictator, but he was so arrogant, or a good guy if you look at it that way, that he actually did raise Libya from one of the lowest standard of living 40 years ago to the highest in Africa today. Now Libya will be used as a African command base for globalist military forces financed by U.S. and European taxpayers to invade the whole of Africa. And that's already begun at racing speed in Somalia, in Chad, in Uganda, and other areas. Now, you know I like to give you some background. Let's get to our special report now here in a moment, Lifting the Veil of Evil. Why do you see Walter Cronkite right there? Not a perfect guy, a guy that wanted globalism, a guy who believed it would bring peace. He was a guy who called for world government because he really believed it would bring world peace, that you wouldn't have countries fighting each other. That said, Walter Cronkite, what, on CBS and others, and I'm going to compile future reports on this because we've got the archival uh, footage, literally hundreds of hours of it, that we've purchased. We're going to show you the difference between television 30, 40 years ago in the 1960s and 70s, and what it has become today. In the 1960s and 70s, you couldn't show violence on television if it was simulated, because violence wasn't a laughing matter. On gun smoke, they couldn't show blood dripping from the mouth or a bullet wound. But they would show atrocities and war because that was real and you needed to see what was happening to make a decision about it. Fast forward to George W. Bush a few years ago, not letting people, and we'll cover this in a moment, see the coffins. Or the fact that when we showed the footage released by WikiLeaks of the 
chopper in Baghdad shooting up reporters from Reuters and children, it was on hundreds of news channels, but on our YouTube channel, it was removed and they threatened to ban our channel till I filed a counterclaim against them. And now it's come out, Google's being ordered by the government to remove things that quote, criticize the government. And we're now learning about an office of censorship that's coming. So I'm going to upload this live newscast we're doing here on this Friday evening tomorrow to our main YouTube channel, the one with 150 million views. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna do, but when YouTube removes it for claims that it's improper, I'm gonna take some kind of action, politically, legally. Because this is about freedom of the press. If Walter Cronkite showed little girls running naked down the middle of the street with their skin burned off, just like when you hear documentaries on NPR, they can play cussing. When I was a kid, I was like, wow, I'm hearing cussing. It's documentary. Or on PBS. This is documentary. The people have a right to see what happened in the 60s and 70s, and they have a right to see what happened just a few weeks ago. But we're not supposed to see the dead American soldiers. We're not supposed to see the dead children or the dying children. So I want to warn you what's coming up is graphic. But first, we're going to show you what aired on NBC, ABC, and CBS. All these clips you're about to see aired on those channels. During the family hour, when they wouldn't let somebody say, darn it, or damn on TV. Because most of these people were veterans. They'd seen, like my grandfather, my dad's dad, B-17 pilot, heavy combat after that, on the ground during the invasion of Italy. He would not let my dad or, or his brother go to see a violent movie. If something violent happened in a movie, he'd get up and leave. Not because he was a wimp, he was a tough guy. The point is he'd seen a lot of friends die. He knew somebody bleeding and dying on a movie wasn't a joke because he'd seen the real thing. Just like in the day of Walter Cronkite, you couldn't show simulated violence, but you could show real violence. You understand that? This isn't a laughing matter and all this simulated violence conditions us to accept all this. So I'm gonna show you what could be seen and what ended the Vietnam War 30, 40 years ago and why on broadcast TV today, on YouTube, on all these systems, they will shut down anybody that tries to show you anything. They do not want you to see. They're banning videos that show mass graves of dead black Africans killed by the Al-Qaeda forces NATO put in right now. That's, that's just the mass graves of the lined up dead bodies. Can't even show that, but they show grade school kids Holocaust film because the people committing the new Holocaust today around the world don't want you to see this. Let's go to the beginning of the report. This is the 25th Division, the newest troops in Vietnam, the United States. This is part of their first heavy attraction. Like most of our troops, they have been taught to depend on firepower and depend on it they do. The objective is to push the Viet Cong back at least one half mile from brigade headquarters and the rest of the base camp. What is wanted is not only a camp, but a clear area all around the camp, so the enemy cannot sneak in close, unnoticed. Here's what they wouldn't show today. That was shown, that child with her skin burned off all over TV in the late 1960s. That little baby, that toddler burned, the napalm, that will not be shown today because you're not allowed to see it. They want to cover that up, child with burned skin. That was shown on television all over the United States. A man shot in the head, blood pouring out. This was shown. That's the TV footage, not the original film. A monk burning themselves up to protest the war, the purest act of sacrifice by nonviolence to illustrate what they were doing to the human soul. That was shown on television. There's the original television broadcast right there. That's CBS. We, the American people, the world's admired democracy, cannot ever again allow ourselves to be misinformed, manipulated, and misled into disastrous foreign adventures. The government must share with the people the making of policy, the big decisions. Ignorance is strength. Now, 
that is literally a tiny fraction. There's stuff a lot more hardcore that I said, you know, because of the time constraints, don't go to it, from the 1960s and 70s. Atrocities on both sides, but the public was shown it. Five and six o'clock, 10 o'clock. Everybody was shown this on broadcast television. Children watch this and parents let them watch it. Because it was reality. Parents wouldn't let you watch simulated violence because simulated violence wasn't a joke. They weren't inserted into the matrix yet. Now, the footage you're about to see is, is there's so many, literally hundreds of these videos that it's just a compilation. If, if whatever box you look into, you're going to see a horror. A guy being hacked to death by the Al-Qaeda forces because he's black in Libya. This is all Libyan stuff. Uh, people being shot in the head. Everything Walter Cronkite would show us 35, 40 years ago that we're not supposed to see today. What changed in this world of sex and violence and everything to the max? But don't see the real thing. I had my YouTube channel suspended showing the Marines killing that puppy four years ago. Because they don't want you to see it. They want you to ignore it and go to Las Vegas and play slot machines or use drugs or go watch porn or do whatever you're doing so you don't realize what your tax money's going to. But this is being done in your name. The rest of the world is seeing what you're about to see and they're saying you support it because our whore media won't show this to you. And I'm done cutting this stuff out on our YouTube channel and other web channels we have. It's going up there. And I'm going to make an issue out of this. And everybody, before they take this down, I'm sure they will. Before they take this down, you get it, you upload it as well. But I'm done. Go to the clip. An intersection littered with bodies. Count a dozen. A grisly tableau of urban warfare. The victims' hands bound behind them. But these bodies appear to be black Africans. Black Africans make up a large portion of Gaddafi's army, raising questions about whether the men were executed by the rebels. These terrible scenes sum up the horror of parts of Tripoli now. Bodies strewn across the street, gunfire echoing through the sky, and large parts of the city remaining a no-go zone. I think it obviously sends a strong message uh, around the world to dictators that yeah. uh, people long to be free and uh, they need to respect the human rights and, and the universal aspirations of people. We introduced the resolution in the United Nations that uh, allowed us to protect civilians in Libya when uh, Gaddafi was threatening to slaughter them. It was uh, our folks in NATO who were helping to coordinate uh, the uh, NATO operation there. And the difference here is we were able to organize the international community. We were able to uh, get the UN mandate for the operation. We were able to get Arab countries involved. And so there was never this sense that somehow we were unilaterally making a decision to take out somebody. Rather, it was the world community. And that's part of the reason why this whole thing only cost us a billion dollars right. as opposed to a trillion dollars. Not a single U.S. troop was on the ground. Not a single U.S. Uh, troop was, uh, was killed or injured. And that, I think, is a recipe for success in the future. I am both surprised and deeply humbled by the decision of the Nobel Committee. The Nobel Peace Prize has not just been used to honor specific achievement, it's also been used as a means to give momentum to a set of causes. And that is why I will accept this award as a call to action. Well, this is what we've become, and there's his call to action. And if you believe this world has a right to see this footage, they can make their own decision. Get this video out to everybody and demand YouTube and others stop buckling to government pressure to shut down the truth. And it's wrong. If we're going to criticize the Chinese for censorship, it's time to point out what's happening. So I'm throwing the gauntlet down. We're putting this up on the YouTube channel. And I'm going to have to take action. The, the people, like Walter Cronkite said, have a right to not be manipulated and lied to. 
They have a right to see what's really going on in their name. And that little child in absolute horror with the whole bottom of their face blown off is just a snapshot of the millions that have been killed in these globalist wars. And it needs to stop. It needs to come to an end now.